Welcome and hello everyone. My name is Pastor Carol. I am the pastor here at Capitol Memorial Church, but we affectionately call it CMC. It's a wonderful place. Today we are actually launching uh, our first podcast. We want to introduce you to why we're doing this podcast and of course the panel here uh, and why we are sharing. What is this about? So I just want to invite you to join us. I'm thankful that you're starting with us that as we launch it's called CMC Uncut. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, CMC Uncut. So before we jump in, I, I don't want to jump in yet. I want uh, my panel, uh, this panel, to um, introduce themselves, and they'll be regulars here. Uh, yes. So my name is Uwe Basanian okay. Yancy, and mm -hmm. it's actually short for Uwe Mana. Okay. Um, and I am a member at CMC Church. I've okay. been a member for more than a decade, and just loving it and continue to be blessed. Okay, okay. Wonderful. What a wonderful place to be today. My name is Jose Luis Davila Gonzalez. Yes. I have four names, but I go oh, by Jose Luis. Four names, okay. <laughs> but uh, I'm very excited to be here with Uwe and you, Pastor Carol, yes. in this very first episode of CMC on Code. Yes. And hopefully, this will bring a lot of wonderful blessings to our people who will be listening. Yes, yes. Watching the videos, listening on podcasts, whatever they. Way that they will choose but thank you so much for having us yes well what happened is let me just tell you how this all started so i was you know when i preach sometimes it seems like there's it's not enough like something else should be said but we really don't have the the time to dialogue with everyone and i started hearing these discussions people were saying well this is what it meant to me this is what this topic meant to me this resonated this really didn't touch me at all and i wanted to know well why don't we have that conversation because i think we learn and we can glean from others their experience so what we'll be doing is i will summarize uh the sermon and then we'll unpack it. What, what, what is it? How is it relevant to you? And what, how could it be a blessing to someone else? Fantastic. So, yes. Wonderful. And I think it's important to know for those who want the full sermon themselves that Pastor Carol's sermons are available on the CMC YouTube page as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So it's a, you could do both. You could, you know, listen to the whole sermon and you could also listen to the synopsis afterwards. Yes, yes. That's good. Absolutely. So for us, it means that we are here to basically tell our audience who is Pastor Carol? Okay. <laughs> so my first question I heard, what were you doing before you became a pastor? Before I became a pastor, I was a chemistry teacher, high school chemistry teacher. I had like 160 plus students a day, high school students teaching them this abstract science because you can't see a molecule or an atom. And I was perfectly happy. <laughs> I was enjoying it. Uh, and God began to deal with me as I was studying his word. I was serving in my local church. Uh, when the doors opened, Carol was there. I mean, I, I just love God. I love God. I love his people. So I would be there just serving, and God began to impress me that I needed to teach the Bible. Mm -hmm. So I started, uh, I would teach our what we call our Sabbath schools, Bible study. Uh, I started uh, sharing. I actually took a homiletics class, which means how to preach. And God began to deal with me. It's time to move on. I would be at the board writing. I would be like, okay, uh, I would be teaching stoichiometry or acids and bases. And I would like have this impression. I would be like ready to say, God bless you. Okay, Jesus. And I'm like, uh oh, I'm in a public school. I can't do that. And so it got to the point where it was actually uncomfortable for me. I, I'm like, how do I keep my mouth closed? And God was saying, no, I do not want you to close your mouth. I want you to share the gospel. I want you to begin to teach the word of God and teach who I am. So I picked up, uh, well, sort of, kind of, my husband and my son and myself went over to Andrews University in Michigan, and they did not like it. <laughs> it is so cold and so dreary and so ugly. And they're like, we will never live here. I said, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and actually, I waited. I delayed a few more years, and it just became to the point God impressed me. It's time to go. So I went to seminary and learned Hebrew and Greek, and that was not easy. 
And uh, yeah, I had a ministerial assignment down in Oklahoma. I was there for four years. And then God called me here to beautiful Capitol Memorial Church and the beautiful <laughs> capital of our nation, Washington, D.C. And so I'm excited. I'm honored. And yet I, I, I want sermons, a sermon I spend a lot of time researching, praying, exegeting. Yeah, what does it mean? But the important part of it, I think, is the application and what it means to each person. So that's why we're doing this. And I know it's going to be awesome because this is what God said for us to do. So Wonderful. Does, that, does that give you a little background? Of course. Now we know that before <laughs> anything, you were a chemistry teacher. Mm-hmm. And I think that there is a lot of different analogies that you can use from that wonderful, mm-hmm. very hard subject that, I, as you said, it's not easy because it's abstract unless mm-hmm. until you see it with all the experiments and everything, but mm-hmm. it takes something, a talent, to make sure that those kids understand all those different complex concepts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think before we continue, so Uwe, you were part of this wonderful one-year-long process yes. to find Pastor Carol. Can you share a little bit about what was that about? Absolutely. Uh, it was a journey. It was a journey, a one that was a little longer than we anticipated. Uh, We set out as a committee of uh, seven members of the church to uh, work very closely with with our board and and, and all of our different leadership to set out the criteria of what we were looking for in a pastor. We did that collectively and uh, went through a process um, that uh, involved a lot of prayer, Mm -hmm. some ups, some downs. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was tough because during the time in which we remained shepherdless, it was during um, covid so uh, we had a lot of people who stepped up and just went above and beyond to keep the church going, and we praise God for that, mm-hmm. including you know members and of our own uh, um, search committee. But God blessed, and you know two of the things that was fundamental to who we wanted in a pastor was one that they had a foundational knowledge of the Bible, and second that they were Christ centered. Those were like a given; they weren't even actually part of our seven criteria. But all, all the other seven criteria that we had. Um, we did not know and see how God was leading us, but it became abundantly clear that Pastor Carol possessed all of that by the grace of God. And so we were blessed beyond measure, and the weight was worth it. And really, for her to be able to come and pastor us in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., in such a time as this, Mm -hmm. where the world really needs to know who Christ is, just an honor and a blessing. So, yes, it was a journey. We waited a long time. It involved a lot of prayer. We were very collective and earnest in our efforts. But God made it very clear who he had selected. Praise God. Wow. Praise God indeed. (laughs) And I said, we heard today, for those who are listening um, and watching, that you are one of 23 Wow. Yes. Women pastors. Yes. Mm-hmm. That is that profound is to me. Yes. In that region, right? Yes. 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 Um, it has been a journey. It is not easy for anyone to be a pastor. Yet, definitely, as a woman, it has many challenges. Yet, God has called us, as you said. I love that, Esther. For such a time as this, we have work to do. Yes. And that's why I believe he wanted us to do this podcast as well. We need to reach outside of our four walls, outside of just our little area, our little community, and help uh, find connection points for people to connect with us, to learn. Because there's so many people, as we were just learning today, just giving you a little snippet, uh, about hesed, about kindness, about people need that. That's what they're looking for. So many are giving up. They're canceling. They're, un- I will never speak to you again. The division. And God is saying, no. That's, that, I love you. I love you. I love each person. Yet I want you all to share that, to show that. And to let others know. So how do we do that? We meet people right where they are in their living room on the, you know, on the national mall. Exactly. <laughs> they, well, they, and they click that Amen. play podcast yes. and listen to the audio of this wonderful podcast. Yeah. So, Pastor Carol. So as I think I shared with you, I know we before, but to our listeners, yes. uh, when I first heard that you, when you announced on the search committee, and everybody said. We found a pastor. We can't wait to share with you the news. We just have one more thing to confirm. And I think I think I shared it with my wife as well. It's like there was something about it that it brought me so much joy. And I didn't know yes. that it was you. I didn't know. <laughs> we had met. I said, we have a pastor. Yes. 
they didn't say anything, but the moment that they announced your name, who you were, a little uh, bio of your journey, I felt so excited and happy. It's like, wow, I can't wait to meet her. Yes. I can't wait to be part of her blessings as a leader of this show. So, and then soon enough, I'm here with you. Yeah, sitting. Yeah, let's go. Let's see. Oh, yes. It is just fantastic. And I think with that, it's just an honor for me to continue to share with our listeners yes. who you are. Yes. And I think, as you mentioned, your maturity, your journey, your spiritual journey didn't just come overnight. So no. can you share with us a yes. little bit about that journey? Yes, yes. Well, as a child, I knew there was a God. I, my parents were not the uh, per, people that would sit there with me at church. They would drop us off at church. And so I was the child uh, jumping up and down, looking over here. <laughs> so it does not bother me when children, uh, they can make all the noise they want in church because that was me. Mm -hmm. And I thank God that I had people that were patient with me and patient with uh, my siblings and I. But um, I knew there was a God. And I, I, I just receive, I, I mean, I would listen to the sermons. I would listen to uh, the word of God. And I would be on the beach saying, God, I know you. Reveal yourself to me. That's who I was. I, I, there was a time, I, I loved his creation. I would go, I, I grew up in a coastal town and we'd go to the beach like regularly. And when I'd see the sunrise, the sunsets, or or um, this one time where there would be snails. And I was like, Daddy, I want to take them home. He said, Carol, we don't have an ocean. We cannot take them home. I said, but Daddy, no. He said, okay. So I had this little uh, pail, and I started putting water in it and all these snails. And he said, Carol, they are not going to, it is not large. No, I love them. This is God's creation. I took them home the next day. You know, everyone in the South has a porch. I came out in the morning, they were all dead. Oh. I feel so bad. But I just love God's creation. I was like, God, I, I just want to take it home. But I... And so that's sort of where my journey started. I knew at an early age, there was a God. Mm -hmm. I don't know theology. I had not really studied a great deal. I would listen to sermons. I would listen to what the adults were saying. But that is where it began. And as I grew up, I had questions. Mm -hmm. I would go. We went to different churches. And I, I'm, what is the word of God saying? And if a church did not have the word of God, I was like, there's something wrong here. Mm -hmm. And there are many people tried to tell me the Old Testament was done away with and things like that. I said, no, God gave us a book, 66 books, mm -hmm. and I want to understand it. And I really did not understand some aspects because I wasn't really taught. Mm -hmm. um, and so especially in the Old Testament, the first five books of the Bible, when I started talking about the cubits, the, uh, the altar, I was like, what is this? I'm a visual learner. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's important that we like do a podcast and we have different ways of sharing mm -hmm. the gospel. And I prayed. I said, God, I, I, I'm reading this, but I have no idea what this is. And someone gave me a book of Ellen G. White, who is uh, one of our founders mm -hmm. um, and of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And so she, it's, it uh, just discusses, delineates exactly the sanctuary, because that's what, the, that's what it was talking about, but actually in pictorial form. And I, for the first time in my life, I understood so that's what it's about. It was a teaching tool, mm -hmm. a methodology that God used to teach them about salvation, about sin, about having a relationship. And so I, and that's something um, I will teach on probably in the fall is a sanctuary. I love the sanctuary. And it's so meaningful. It's so simplistic. You can teach a child, but at the same time, it really gives you the big picture mm -hmm. of the plan of salvation. Beautiful. And so when I understood that, I found the first uh, Seventh-day Adventist church, and I love our, our, our denomination. And not that a denomination will save you. We, our Savior is Jesus Christ. Uh, yet, we love the Word of God. We study the Word. We look at the Word. Our baseline, our, our norm is the Word of God, not just someone else's ideas or traditions. What is the Word saying? Mm -hmm. And so we teach our children the Word of God. So if you... Uh, what if you align with us and and you will learn and i was hungry for the word i've been in church all my life but i really did not understand the plan of salvation so after i um and when i had the book i was actually in atlanta they were giving out thousands of them i cried for about three days because i really i mean there are people that are reading the word that do not understand it and i was reading i can read the new testament but there were still nuances of things I did not understand because it was from the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And so I praised God. And uh, that's sort of where my journey started as an Adventist. And then I had a bump in the road. I had a health issue. 
So I, I, I was going to church, which, praise God, you know, I mean, we should come to church. But it was, it was still pretty superficial. My heart had not been changed. Mm -hmm. I was the youngest child, and my parents loved me, and they indulged me, and I was the baby, and they spoiled me. And when you're spoiled, God will have to unspoil you mm -hmm. because selfishness doesn't go with selflessness and worshiping him. It's not about us. It's really about him. Mm -hmm. So I went through a, a, a little issue, and I realized during that uh, diagnosis, and it came out uh, that I had a lump in my body, and um, then I went back to the doctor. It was gone. But I had prayed. I had asked everyone. I used to go, will you pray for me? Will you pray for me? Will you pray? And then God told me, he impressed me. You've got to pray for me yourself. You've got to just uh, talk to me. And my whole world just changed. Wow. And so wow. that's sort of how my journey started. And then after that, when the church opened, it could be a Wednesday night. It could be a Sabbath morning, Sabbath afternoon. I'm at the church. What can I do, Lord? Because I love, I really developed a love relationship mm -hmm. with God. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And it's all about love. That's it. He, it's, loves, he yes. draws us with loving kindness. Mm -hmm. you know? Yes, he does. And he keeps us. Together. Yes. But it's having that relationship with him. And it's a love relationship. It's a growing. I'm not perfect, but I'm growing. I have a trajectory. I'm growing. He's showing me things and I'm growing with him. But being connected and staying in that place. It's not something we put on and take on. It's daily. When I wake up in the morning, it's, it's Jesus first. Absolutely. I love my husband. I love my family, but Jesus, good morning. Yes. <laughs> Father God, come in. Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So that's Wonderful. sort of, yeah, how I got here. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> for our listeners, so what is something that you would like to share uh, about yourself that they should know as you are entering this journey of sharing God's word every, whenever you launch a new episode. What are some of the things that they should know about you? Um, I think they should know about me that I am, first of all, a sinner saved by grace. Mm -hmm. I am a sinner. And when I preach something, God is already dealing with me about it. I, so I'm not uh, talking down to anyone or singing. This is something he's showing me and revealing to me about myself. Mm -hmm. uh, just what I preached today, Hesed, <laughs> kindness and goodness. So I had to make a phone call this week. Uh, someone who had, uh, I just feel... I saw they were gossiping about me and I guess they didn't know that I heard it. And so it, it was a bit painful because it's someone that's close to me. And God said, no, we're not holding on to grudges. Uh, you care for this person. You know, uh, they love you as well. However, uh, you need to make it right. You just go to them. And if they're not, they, they weren't ready to apologize or anything, but I, I can forgive them and go on. Amen. Okay. So it's not just saying it, it's living it. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what I really want people to know that this journey is real. Yes. It is a journey of love. It's a journey with Jesus. It's a journey with our friends, uh, but it's real. And this is our life. And it, it's the greatest mm -hmm. experience in the universe. There's nothing else. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what your back uh, ground is, but I've tried. I wasn't always in the church. I went to the club. I was hanging out with my friends. I was like going to happy hour. You know, I, I was looking for love. I was looking for fulfillment and so many things. Mm -hmm. And nothing, and absolutely nothing fulfilled. Nothing pleased. Mm -hmm. Nothing mm -hmm. satisfied except Jesus Christ. Absolutely. The relationship with him. So when I speak, it's uh, real and it's what God has said. Mm -hmm. So when I do a series like Faith Series, I actually wanted to do something else, and the Lord impressed me. No, faith, mm -hmm. because that, that's foundational. Then Jesus, yeah. and then this, the Holy Spirit. And then he's already told me where I'm going next, right? We'll take <laughs> <laughs> We can't wait to be yeah, yeah. on this journey with you. Yeah, I really appreciate the pragmatism and the approach by which um, the word is approached. Uh, it is, 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 is taught and preached because it's important. It has to connect with what's actually happening in your life. And I think that's important. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Praise God. Yes. Indeed. Yes. Indeed. Yes. So one of the things that I think uh, is fascinating when we start a project and you started this project and we are just one of the ones that came along as guests is how do you know? No, you're panelists. Yes. You're, you're there. So when I'm not here, you all will be ready and then we'll have other, yeah, no, no, you're all in. So tell me more about this uh, name, so the uh, yes. CMC on code, and what does that mean, and what do you see these episodes to be about? Well, y'all looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> Where did I get it from? Yeah. Yes. 
<laughs> well, well, no, no. I mean, because for, 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 for those who may not know, the, the, the three of us, we did some brainstorming. Yes. We yes. really put a lot of thought mm. and care into what what we wanted for yeah. this particular piece, which we it, it's really God's work and that, that, that we're, we're, we're part yeah. of and we're vessels for. And in brainstorming, um, we were just thinking of something that sort of denotes a bit of rawness, you know, okay. a, a conversation yes. that just kind of, um, you know, uh, sort of pours out some of the some of, some of the things that we have experienced and some of the things that big takeaways from it. And so and we wanted to do a production. It's not, you know, nothing super refined, but something just raw and real mm-hmm. and that will connect with audiences. So Absolutely. that was part of the, the, the thinking behind CMC Uncut. But I, I didn't I didn't do it on my own. Jose Luis contributed. Yes, and, yeah. okay, it was a, definitely a, a team uh, effort, but also like it felt right to you. Yeah. Like, okay. The name felt mm-hmm. right, and I think that's when we, as you mentioned, it's not about okay, we are going to lecture you yes. again. Yes. It's more about like yes. so what it meant to you. Yes. Right. What about it? Yes. So tell us all. And yes. all of that is going to be raw. It's going to be yes. sincere, yes. honest, right yes. after right. the service. Mm-hmm. So whenever we have guests and yes. they will be part of this, they will be able to share and for all to hold that space. That's right. Yes. right? And I think yes. that's why I love the CMC, again, Capital Memorial Church Uncut. Yes. Right? yes. And what yeah. I, I, I love that as well because I don't want it edited. Yes. I want it raw and real because that's yeah. how our life is you do exactly. not get a do-over from yesterday that's or right. five minutes ago right. it's what we did what we said what we're thinking who we really are yep. so uh, i think uncut is actually reality <laughs> that's where we live yeah. yes right. yes right. yeah so right. i love it and i think god really gave you that name and yes we're going to go yes. and i think that's what people want mm. they want to know that this is real and that it's relevant to them. Yes. They do not need any more. Um, I was at a place and they were they had a hype person, H Y P E, like the person hypes up the crowd, yeah. hypes up the people. I'm like, wow. And okay, this was at a church, but anyway. Uh, and I thought this is interesting, um, but uh, that's not life. Mm-hmm. Our life is raw. It's uncut. It's yeah. real with Jesus Christ, and that's yeah. what He's called us to share. Amen. And who we really are, how we really feel, Absolutely. and um, what it mean, what it means to us. What does this mean to me? How can I utilize this? How did it convict me of something? Like today, I had people saying, "Wow!" Even though it's very simplistic, I know people want me sometimes to go. I, I have to do just what God tells me. I preach what he says. I, I don't always have to go so deep. I, I can preach on certain doctrines. I can go prophetic. I can, I can, but that's not what God has called, uh, called us to do. Right now, you need to deal with us. Mm. And if we may have a seminar or series about prophecy, but that's not our everyday life. Our everyday life is right where we are. And yes, we want to understand the big picture, mm. but I think that's more of a teaching workshop kind of a, a thing than just uh, from the pulpit. So, um, some people were telling me today that really hit, that hit home, that that's what I needed because many times we're holding on to grudges. Yes. We're holding on. We're really not kind because we take it on and put it off, especially for those that sort of rub us the wrong way. Uh, maybe are not, um, just falling in the direction we are. We think, Oh, this person, oh, this, you know, and God, that is not God. No. After all that they did, mm. I mean, God was there. He blessed them miracle after miracle. You're walking around on dry ground. I dealt with your enemies. I provided food, and there's no grocery stores. Yeah. There's no restaurants. I took give you water. The body has to have water. Mm. Hit a rock. Here's your yeah. water. Yes. Their their shoes didn't wear out. I'm gonna go over that next week. There. I mean, just so many things. Miracle after miracle after miracle, just his presence. Uh, uh, hold it, no GPS, no map. There's a pillar, oh, this is the way to go. Oh, this way, oh, we're shopping here for the night. Yeah. So what could you possibly, yes. what? Yeah. And your route to, to God. Can you imagine how they treated each other? Yeah. yeah. So that's what he's saying to us. Yeah. This is real. It is real. This is about yeah. who we really are. Yeah. We don't have to put on and take off. Mm-hmm. And that that um, service I was telling you about, I heard this person, and they got up and said how for many years they were hypocrites mm-hmm. because they would put on a face when they came to church and they were somebody else as soon as they got in the mm-hmm. car. And God doesn't want that. He wants it uncut. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's how we can get surgery. When you have surgery, you don't say, okay, hold on. Let me put my makeup on. No, no, don't, don't uh, remove the scalpel. No, no, no. We're just not going to go inside. We're just going to act like we are. Well, you're going to have the same issue. You're, nothing will change. Yeah. 
We have to open up, be who we are, and um, allow the word to speak to us, yeah. to the inner core of who we are, yeah. the inner man, the inner woman. And then that's where the change and transformation comes. Amen. And that's where the love and the life, and it's a great journey. Because when I look back at my life, I'm like, wow, yes. praise God for where you brought me from. Amen. What a wonderful preview. I know. <laughs> of this wonderful <laughs> podcast, <laughs> video podcast. Yes. And I think the the, yeah. the, the, the the listeners, the members of the church, and whoever, again, because this is, as you mentioned, this is not meant to be just for the members of Capital Memorial Church. Of course it's for them, mm -hmm. but it's for anyone, anyone. who has access to yes. this device. Yes. It will be yeah. in Africa, in Europe, in yes. Asia, and run yes. out of this, yes. Yes. what is this random podcast? Yes. Let me check it out. And yes. God will speak to that person yeah. yes. far, far away that we perhaps yeah. will never know, but who knows? Yeah. Yes. That's the, the beauty of, as you mentioned, the, using the media, yes. using the tools that God yeah. has given us. Mm -hmm. So I can't wait for one day, Pastor God, when you say like, yes. Someone from far, far away yes. listen to this and it yes. means something. And exactly. his or her life has a different Absolutely. because of it. Yeah. So yeah. I think it would actually be helpful to add a link to the, the sermon today, which was uh, what, what Pastor Carol was just picking up and giving us a little bit of a preview in terms of a synopsis of what kindness means. It's on the fruit of the Spirit. Yes. And uh, today's uh, sermon was on kindness and uh, just the delivery Goodness. of the children of Israel that you described yes. is, 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 a, is such a beautiful journey in the epitome of what kindness and goodness is. Yes. So perhaps we can put a link. So yes. much stuff goodness, so <laughs> little time. But the good news is that we'll be right back. And this is just a preview because we want to make sure that before Pastor Carol shares more about all of this, mm -hmm. is that you guys get to know who she is. Right. And I think you have... Giving yes. us that. Yes. Oh, I can't yes. wait. Yes. I can't wait. And yes. I think before we leave, I know that we are running out of time. Mm -hmm. I also want the listeners to know your side, your human side. What are some of the things that Pastor Carol likes <laughs> about food, <laughs> okay. about your hobbies, before okay. we let everybody... Okay, I'm a fruititarian. I love fruit. Now, not that I don't eat other stuff, but I love I fruit. Love yes, fruit. do you? Yes, yes. I love fruit. Uh, I do like a little chocolate, too. Okay. <laughs> we all I love guess chocolate. I do. Well, that's, no. a, that's a sweet spot. That's a sort of spot for me. But yes, I love nature, as I said. I love yeah. nature. I uh, love going to, I, I want to see the cherry blossoms. Yes. I want to go, I mean, um, anything natural. Um, I, I love it. I love my family, of course, my husband, my son, my siblings. I love the church family. I love reading. I love the Word of God. I mean, I do read other books, but basically my go-to is the Word of God. You can never have enough of that. I mean, um, yes, I love it. Uh, and I love traveling. I do love traveling. I don't travel as much as I used to, but I love to see God's creation. Mm -hmm. So uh, just, uh, and then I'll end on this, a little snippet on that. So many times we could fly across the country, we drive. I know people don't usually, but I love to see the countryside. I love to see the farms. I love to see the beauty of our nation. I love it. So anytime I can get out into nature, it clears my head. I, I can just sort of debrief. It's a, it's sort of a self-care. Mm. Wonderful. Yes. Wow. Okay. So a little bit of everything. Yes. Of, uh, we want to make sure that uh, Uwe and I had this privilege of sharing a little bit about who you are, both yes. in yes. the uh, journey uh, and a wonderful journey that you had before as a chemistry teacher, but yes. now as a senior pastor here in Washington, D.C. So thank you so much for having us, yeah, for, no, thank for you. inviting us, and we can wait for the next episode. Is there anything else that you want to leave a final message to the well, future Well, I listeners? just want to say thank you to both of you, blessings, and for what God has for us mm -hmm. and for those that will be joining us. This is a powerful ministry. It is a witness for God. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you, blessings, and blessings to each of you that are watching. Tell someone else. Join us. We love you. We praise God for you. Jesus loves you more. God bless you. Bye-bye.